Welcome everyone to today's presentation, Auditors of the Future. I'm Mike Richman, your host for Exemplar Global's Excellence in Auditing Expo 2024. Today's session here at the Expo is presented by Jackie Stapleton. Jackie is a triple certified contract auditor and the owner director of Auditor Training Online. Jackie in this presentation today is going to take us through a brief overview of not only the technical, but really more the soft skills that tomorrow's conformity assessment professionals and auditors embody as in there. So Jackie, thanks for joining us and uh, look forward to your presentation today. Thanks for the introduction, Mike, and thank you for having me here once again. Over my many years as an ISO professional working across many roles, there is one area that stands out amongst all auditors, consultants, implementers, and trainers working in the ISO world. It might surprise you as to what the must-have ingredient is, so let's take a look. Today, I'm going to work with you to discover what skills I have learned are important for an ISO professional to advance their career successfully. The obvious area is, of course, technical skills. So that's ISO standards. I'm the first to admit that this is vital to the point that one of my businesses, Auditor Training Online, offers these qualifications and it is definitely the framework to start with. However, do not underestimate the importance of social skills, which might also be referred to as personal behaviours, soft skills, interpersonal skills, or even EI or emotional intelligence. I'll share with you some stories and statistics along the way to back up the importance of these social skills. When we weigh up the difference between technical and soft skill requirements, we might instantly think that technical skills are the only thing that is important when it comes to our profession. And if you don't know your ISO standards and the cause requirements, how on earth can you conduct an audit or implement a system? You might also think that social skills are not mandatory or just common sense. After all, you are the auditor, consultant or implementer, so doesn't everyone else just have to listen to you? And you might also think that being nice and understanding isn't going to change the result of the audit. So let's explore this. Let's first take a look at some statistics that help us understand the significance of soft skills. In the 2019 Global Talent Trends Report, it showed that 92% of talent professionals and hiring managers agree that candidates with strong soft skills are increasingly important. So I'll repeat myself because it is increasingly important. 92% agree that candidates with strong soft skills are increasingly important. In fact, it could make or break hiring of the perfect candidate as 89%, that's 89% feel that bad hires typically have poor soft skills. So again, I'll repeat that. So if we have a bad hire, someone that hasn't worked out, they typically have poor soft skills. So what is really going on out there for auditors? There are quite a few real world stories that I can share with you and I'm sure you've got your own as well. First up, I'd like to introduce Tech. Tech the auditor. Tech was employed as an external certification auditor for a certification body. They had an environmental science degree, and this degree included knowledge of ISO 14001 requirements. So technically and academically, they knew their stuff. The certification body thought that having this academic and technical knowledge would be an easy transition to auditing. 
So TAC was sent on a few observation audits leading into report writing, of course. Long story short, it was a disaster as TAC could not get their head around simply writing the report against the ISO requirements and tried to be far too technical in the reports. Despite a lot of coaching and support, tech just didn't work out as they just couldn't get their head out of the technical element. Then there is Arrogant, the auditor. I wrote about this recently in a LinkedIn newsletter. Um, you can scan that QR code if you want the full article. In short, though, the story is about a young female consultant that I know and work with, and let's call her Courage. She was supporting her client during a recent certification audit. Courage, the consultant, has a fantastic relationship with her client, and together they have invested not only a lot of time, but also passion into building the integrated management system. The system was already certified, and so this was a surveillance audit. Their audit experience soon turned quite sour when arrogant the auditor arrived. Arrogant, the auditor had something to prove, stepped outside of his role as an external auditor and felt the need to consult as well, just to show everyone how clever he was. He loved to share resources and documents of his own with the client, pointing out to Courage, the consultant, and her client that his documents were much better than theirs. Arrogant, the auditor, even thought it was necessary to bring up the system documents on the big screen in front of all those in attendance and start giving some training and lessons. He even stopped and asked, now, what do you see is wrong with this document? It was all quite patronising and condescending. It actually got to the point where the client told Courage, the consultant, that he had to leave the room as it was like watching her get into trouble with her dad. He couldn't stand it any longer. These are just two reality auditor stories that I have heard in the industry recently. There are plenty more. Both of them demonstrate, in this instance, both of them de these demonstrate the importance of social skills and, of course, reading the room. Of course, these social skills apply to many roles in the ISO industry, consultants and system implementers as well. Many years ago, at the beginning of my consulting career, I met another couple of new consultants embarking on their ISO journey. Michelle loved her ISO standards, and in a conversation with her, she would sprout off and quote clauses word for word. I'm not kidding you. They were word for word like she had photographic memory straight from the standard. It was hilarious, quite entertaining as well, actually. Then there was Mick. He also loved his ISO standards but liked carrying them around with him and studying them when he needed to. I enjoyed many a chat with Mick, not only about ISO but life in general. He was really comfortable to talk to. And the clients I met that he worked with enjoyed working with him. This made the process so much easier and more comfortable for everyone concerned, most importantly, the client. Several years later, I bumped into Michelle and she told me that she was now working in a salary position for a company as she had trouble getting and keeping clients as a consultant. So she moved back into a salary position. Meanwhile, Mick was booked out for months ahead as people were clambering to work with him. This shows that while technical skills are invaluable, I'm not denying that, it's often the human touch, the ability to engage and connect on a personal level that truly sets ISO professionals apart and defines their success. Add to this, I recently asked a colleague with experience managing auditors within a certification body what the top don'ts were 
as an auditor. These are real eye openers, so listen carefully. Watching inappropriate content on clients' computers, I will not go into any further detail than that. Using racist language when in the company of people with different ethnic backgrounds. Speaking to a client at an audit and in referencing her height, called her an Amazon. True story. A site requirement was to be breathalyzed at the beginning of the workday. I'm sure we've all been through that process. I know I have. And this particular auditor blew over the limit. So remember, this is at the beginning of the audit. At the start of the day, the auditor blew over the limit due to, it seems, hitting the minibar a bit too heavily the night before. Auditors not listening to the client and instead superimposing their beliefs into the audit and not auditing to standards or understanding why the client is doing what they are doing. Remember that there is not one way to implement a standard. Not adapting to the type of client. So showing up to a farm in high heels and a skirt or having blokey talk in a corporate environment. Turning up late or not at all without explanation. Talking too much about themselves. I have experienced this one personally. One client actually said they wanted an audit not the auditor's life history. Making staff cry, lacking the flexibility. You are not the audit police. I say this so often. You are not the audit police. It's not about placing blame. It's about systems and improvement. You are there to provide a robust audit and provide improvements for your audit client and business. It's not a quick smash and grab process. And of course, I don't just want to highlight the negative stuff. There are a lot of great auditors and ISO professionals out there as well. And these are the do's that I've come across or have had shared with me. The auditor recognises milestones for their achievements and celebrates with the client. Some auditors have great relationships with their clients that last many years. I know for me, uh, I did a couple of audits recently and both of them I have uh, been working with them for nine years. So we've gone through three certification cycles. So fantastic to work, work with and for. Being available to help clients grow and improve, but remembering, not consulting. Listening to the client and being understanding of their needs. So there's always some staff or family or personal issues, natural disasters as well. So not seeing it as a reason to raise multiple non-conformances, like coming in harsh, show some empathy as well. And that goes in line with being pragmatic and flexible, having some pride in your report writing skills also. Effective listening. Allow the clients to speak. Work collaboratively. I'll say that again, work collaboratively with your auditee, client, and as well as your audit team members. It's great to be robust and follow the requirements. However, also be pragmatic and consider the status of the system. It's a long road and it's continual growth. So now if we combine the do's and don'ts list, so this is the don'ts and this is the do's list, so I've combined them all here. What do they have in common? I just want you to think about that. What do they have in common? And I'll ask another question. Are they technical? So are they technical skills? Or are these social skills? I think you would all agree and consider these to be social skills. There's no evidence there of anything to do with ISO standards or requirements. These are attributes that pertain to how individuals interact with others and are not specific technical skills related to the requirements of an ISO standard. 
They are often referred to as soft skills as well. I think I said that earlier. And are crucial for effective communication, building relationships and professional conduct, all of which are vital for us as auditors and ISO professionals. So now that I've shared some real world stories, let's look at some more stats. Based on the information from this Career Builder press release, you can scan that QR code again if you want to um, read the full article. This visual chart displays the value employers place on emotional intelligence, so EI, compared to IQ. The key statistics are reported as, and I'll highlight them as we go. So 71% of employers value emotional intelligence over IQ. 61% of employers are more likely to promote workers with high emotional intelligence over high IQ. 59% of employers would not hire someone with a high IQ but a low EI or emotional intelligence. So that means that they could have the highest IQ ever, but if they have a low EI, then 59% of employers would not hire them. And then finally, 75% would promote a high emotional intelligence candidate over a high IQ candidate for their ability to handle pressure and resolve conflicts effectively. And I just want to say that I haven't made any of this up. It's already in an ISO standard. Personal behaviours are included in ISO 19011, Guidelines for Auditing Management Systems. I won't go through all of these personal behaviours, as I'm sure you can all read them, and you might already be familiar with them anyway. However, the leading paragraph of these 13 personal behaviours in ISO 19011 states that auditors should possess the necessary attributes to enable them to act in accordance with the principles of auditing. Auditors should exhibit professional behaviour during the performance of audit activities. So let's break that down a little. These personal behaviours that are being referred to in ISO 13, sorry, ISO 19011 are the 13 desired personal behaviours in the table. Now, let me ask, that question again. Are these technical skills or soft skills? Take it technical in any way or are these soft skills? So I'm sure you all agree that these are soft skills again. So how can we frame this to improve our own soft skills and in turn provide a positive experience for our clients and don't forget our own career growth. I'd like to share that there are two things that will be helpful for you as an auditor or an implementer of an ISO system while working with your auditees and all your clients. You have access right now to these two things. These are your toolbox, so your toolbox, and your backpack. Let's talk about your toolbox first. When we think about what we need to do our jobs well, technical skills are normally the first thing that come to mind. These are like the must-haves in a toolbox, absolutely essential. Think of them as the hammers and wrenches of auditing. We just can't do without them. But it's not just about having these tools. What really matters is how we use them and keep them up to date. That's where training and continual learning come in. We're always adding to our toolbox, sharpening our skills and staying ahead of the game. Each skill in our toolbox has its special use. 
We pull out what we need depending on the task at hand. It's all about using the right tool at the right time. Still, there's more to being a great auditor than just having a full toolbox. Technical skills get the job done by themselves. But, sorry, they get the job done, but by themselves they don't tell the entire story of our success. That's where our backpack comes in. Now, let's talk about the backpack. This isn't something you always see easily, but it's always there. So, you know, you've got your backpack on. It's your soft skills, those social smarts you've been picking up throughout your life, like it in your backpack and your career. You know that the backpack is filled with experiences. It's those chats by the coffee machine, the tough conversations you may have had, the handshakes, the high fives, these moments that teach us how to read a room, how to listen, and how to really hear what's being said. Like it should be comfy, right? It's comfy on our back. It fits snugly because it's a part of us, who we are. Whether you're talking to a client or working with your audit team, you don't have to rummage through to find what you need. The right skill just comes to you right when you need it. It's just all there in your backpack. And it's got variety. There's empathy, leadership, teamwork, you name it. These are the skills that help us connect, build relationships, and make a lasting impression. Most importantly, this backpack is what can really take us places, okay? Sure, our technical skills open the door, but it's the soft skills that invite us in and help us to stay there. They are the real key to our success. So now you might be thinking, well, so what or now what? So to help you pack your own backpack, you can focus on these six key areas. So Practice active listening. Focus on understanding the speaker's message without interrupting or preparing your response. I'm sure you've all had conversations with people like that because you can actually see that they're just thinking of something else and what they're going to say in return. And they're not listening to you. They're not present. So by practicing active listening, it demonstrates respect and attentiveness. Develop empathy. Make a conscious effort to perceive and relate to the emotions and experiences of others. Empathy can significantly improve the way you interact and respond to different situations. You can sharpen your communication, work on conveying your thoughts clearly and concisely and tailor your communication style to different audiences and settings. We need to be flexible around that. Learn conflict resolution. So gain skills to manage and resolve disagreements constructively, which is key to maintaining strong professional relationships. And then finally, expand your network. Engage with a diverse group of people. Networking is a practical way to encounter different perspectives and practice social skills in various contexts. It reminds me when I saw that various contexts. It's like um, when I say networking, it's not about, you know, going to the old school networking events. It could be um, on LinkedIn, for instance. It's a great business platform to join groups and join discussions and provide your opinion or feedback on different areas. So that's a different context altogether. And even better still, why don't you complete our interpersonal skill quiz? So this is this QR code here from Order Training Online. You'll learn about your own soft skills and where you do well, as well as any areas you can grow in. So scan that QR code and you'll get access to that quiz. And also, we've just created our own GPT for you to upload your resume to. So it will, this GPT will review your skills and experience and provide a report on how well your skills transfer into the ISO profession. 
It's a great way to have an unbiased view of your experience. Again, you just simply scan that QR code to gain access to that GPT. And of course, if you need support in any of these areas, working with an ISO industry career consultant will take you to the next level. I absolutely love the technical aspects of ISO standards and always have them handy. They're right here in front of me, as always. I have experienced many aspects and roles in the ISO world, starting off as an auditee. That's fantastic experience as an auditee. Then an internal audit auditor. Then I was a systems manager, a trainer. I'm currently a certification auditor as well as the trainer, as well as the career consultant specialising in the ISO industry. So I have a full backpack of soft skills. However, I'm always adding more to my backpack. Don't worry. Let me know if I can help you in any way. You can just, again, scan the QR code and book a free call. And, uh, yeah, let me know what uh, you'd like help with. And, of course, you can contact me or the team directly as well. So for your training and qualification requirements, which are your technical skills, you will, will go to or to training online, okay? For your career growth strategy and support soft skills, I offer the um, ISO career consulting also. So you can um, contact us directly on either of these um, emails or websites. To finish off, I'd like to say thank you and leave you with this thought from Maya Angelou, who was an American author, poet, and civil rights activist. She said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Just something for us to think about, isn't it? So thank you so much. And now I'd love to answer your question. All right. Well, thank you, Jackie. I actually have a question for you. Um, so I I would love to to kind of get your feedback on this one. So you 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 talk a lot, little bit about uh, in your presentation about uh, the soft skills and and the technical skills as well. So what were your kind of your best ways of learning them? Was that, were those things that you learned through, through just life experiences, work experiences, through through mentors, through what, what yeah. would you say were some of your top ways to obtain those skills? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great question because, um, you know, I always uh, sort of consider, oh, how do you teach this? What does this look like? And it, it is continual growth, but I think being aware is the first step, okay? So having some self-awareness. Something that was said to me many years ago, I think it was 25 plus years ago, I did a business, I can't even remember what the course was. It was a short course at TAFE. We have TAFE here in Queensland, so that's adult learning. And it was something to do with, you know, your own business. And the, the trainer said to me, when you ask a question or say something, before it comes out of your mouth, ask yourself, why? Yeah. Why are you making that statement? Why are you asking that question? And I still use it today because sometimes I go to say something and think, oh, hold on, is that for me? Yeah, if you start using that and becoming aware, it's like, oh, no, Jackie, you don't need to say that. You're just saying that or asking that question because you want to highlight yourself. Sure. Now, that's got nothing to do with my client or what, you know, what what their challenges are or what we're discussing. So that single question 25-plus years ago has helped me to really become aware of what's coming out of my mouth mm. and why I'm actually saying something. And it's really helped me to, to reflect back on myself as to, yeah, that those soft skills in that past. So basically I'm, I'm shutting up. I'm not saying what maybe what I first thought and I'm coming up with a more intentional question or response. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it goes back to one of the one of the soft one of the the key skills uh, that you had mentioned, which was really humility. I mean, you 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 alluded to it, and you've you've talked about that in the yep. past as well. I mean, humility is a very important thing for an auditor to have to approach people Absolutely. without thinking you know all the answers. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, and something else, sorry, Mike, I thought yeah. of is um, feedback, feedback to yourself, which is mm. sort of about being aware. But um, for me personally, when I complete an audit, I actually write, write myself some notes on how the audit went so I can remember it for the next audit. And it's not just about, you know, the technical stuff. That's all in the audit report. This is about how I could have done it better. Okay, so I write these notes. So then when I'm planning the audit for the next surveillance audit or research, I go to those notes and go, oh, okay. This is sort of some pushback I received from one person. How could I have handled that better? How will I handle that better now when I'm interviewing him next year? Okay, so I learn from these interactions, and I had one just a few weeks ago from someone um, that did not respond all that well. So I reflected on how I said things, my body language, how can I manage that better next time? So, again, that's awareness, but also you know, giving yourself feedback does that make sense? That absolutely makes sense. And I think that's that's mm. great. We talk about feedback all the time, but giving yourself feedback is is often the most powerful way to do it. So that's a, a great suggestion as well. So Thank Jackie, you. great job. That was really interesting session. I hope all of you out there watching right now got a lot out of it as well. Um, as Jackie mentions, if you want to ask uh, Jackie any questions or you want to write to us, you can write us there at, at info at exemplarglobal.org. We'll get your questions right over to Jackie. Uh, she also had her contact information there that you hopefully scanned on the QR code as you were following along as well. Uh, so yeah, so contact either one of us if you have questions and you'd like to learn more. We'd love to hear from you, of course, as always. Uh, and if you've attended the session and you have, uh, please go ahead and, and uh, claim your CPD for this session. You can get CPD on all of our sessions at this year's uh, Excellence in Auditing Expo 2024. So check all that out. Uh, so thanks again for joining us, Jackie. Thanks for that. Great job as always. As I mentioned, really appreciate you joining us here at the Expo. Thank you so much, Mike. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. Thank you all again, and we'll see you soon at the next session here at the Excellence in Auditing Expo. So long. Mm -hmm.